Hello guys, welcome to my channel. Today we will discuss about the another part of second chapter that is sexual reproduction in flowering plant. So today we will discuss about pollination. So what is what is pollination? Pollination means transfer of pollen grains from one flower to another flower. So what is pollination? Pollination is the transfer of pollen from the male anther of a flower to the female stigma. Now the essence of pollination. That means how pollination occurs, or through which, or through the, which medium pollination is occurs. Pollination may be biotic or abiotic. That means pollination can occur by two way. That is biotic way or abiotic way. Biotic pollinations release on living pollinators to move the pollen from one flower to another, and abiotic pollinations release on wind, water, or even rain. That's when biotic pollination occurs through the biotic agents like animals, birds, insects, etc. And abiotic pollination occurs through the abiotic like wind, water, rain, etc. So, what is abiotic pollination? Abiotic pollination uses non-living methods such as wind and water to move pollen from one flower to another flower. This allows the plant to spend energy direct on or directly on pollen rather than on attracting pollinators with flowers and nectars. That means in case of ab abiotic pollinators, non-living things like wind water acts as a bi pollinating agent. So, how by wind pollination happens? Some ninety-eight percent of abiotic pollinations is anemophily. Pollinations by wind. That means the pollination that is occurred by wind is known as anemophily. Pollination by wind is more common amongst pollinations. Wind pollination also requires that the pollen grains are light and non-sticky so that they can be transferred in wind currents. That means the flowers which are in the flowers in where pollination occurs through the wind, these uh, these flowers are always non-sticky or light in weight, so that they can disperse easily through the wind. They often possess well-exposed stamens, stamens and large, often featherly stigma to trap easily air branch, airborne pollen grains. That means the stick the stamens in case of the flowers which are pollination which where pollination occurs through vines the stamens are always well exposed and stigma are featherly. Wind pollinated flowers have a single ovule like corn cob. It is also common in grasses. That means wind pollinations occurs in corn cob or grasses by water. Pollination by water is quite rare in flowering plants and it and is limited to about 30 genera, mostly mono, monocotyledons. That means the pollination through water is rare and only 30 genera which are pollinated through water. The pollination that occurs by water is known as hydrophily. I mean, pollination by water, hydrophily, uses water to transport pollen, sometimes as whole anthers. This can travel across the surface of the water to carry dry pollen from one flower to another flower. That means through the water medium, the pollens are transferred from one flowers to another flowers. It is found in lower plants in groups such as algae, bryophytes and teridophytes. In Valisneria spi spiralis, and unopened male flowers floats to the surface of the water and upon reaching the surface opens up and the fertile anther project forwards. That means in Valencera spiralis plant, the male flowers uh, floats through the water and when it comes contact with the stigma of the another flower, it opens and projects into the flower. The female flowers also floating up and its stigma protect from the water while its spills are slightly depressed into the water. 
following the male flowers to tumbling. Now the another abiotic pollination is occurred by rain. Rain pollination is used by a small percentage of plants. That means pollination through the rains occurs on some small percentage of plants. Heavy rain discourages insect pollinations and damages unprotected flowers. But can itself disperse pollen of pollen of suitably adapted plants such as Ranunculus, Famula, Northisicum, Northisicum, Ossifragum, Clotha, Plastris, etc. In this plant, excess rain drains allo allowing the floating pollens to come contact with the stigma. That means we know in when heavy rainfall occurs, it damages the flowers, but some in some flowers, rain acts as a pollinating agents. Now the biotic pollination. Biotic pollination means the pollination that occurs through the living organisms. Majority of flowers plant use a range of animal as pollinating agents. Bees, butterflies, flies, beetles, ants, moths, birds, especially the sunbirds and hummingbirds. And bats are the common pollinating biotic agents. Sometimes monkeys, lemurs, squirrels, rodents, are also act as a pollinating biotic agents. That's mean insect and birds are most common poly biotic pollinating agents and sometimes lemurs, mammals like lemurs, monkeys, squirrels, rodents are act as a biotic pollinating agents. Pollination by insect is known as antimophily. That means the pollination which occurs through the insects such as bees, wasp, beetle, moths, butterflies, etc. is known as entomophily. In case of these, the petals of flowers are very bright and color colorful and attracted by insects such as bees, wasp, beetles, moths and butterflies very easily. That means that as the petals are very bright and colorful in nature, the insects are easily attracted to the flowers. When this insect suck nectars from one flower to another they transfer pollen grains one flower to another flowers and act as a pollinating essence that means the flowers when sucks nectar from one flower the nectars are nectars or pollen grains are attached to their legs wings etc and they and when they sit another flowers the nectars or pollen grains transfers to transfers on flowers to the another flowers. Now the pollination that occurs by vertebrates such as birds, bats, hummingbirds, sunbirds, etc. is known as zoophily. That means the pollination that occurs through the vertebrates it is known, known as zoophily. Plants adapted to use bats or moths as pollinators typically have white petals, strong scent and flower at night. That means the flowers that are dew freely, they are always strong scent and white petals and they bloom at night. Whereas plants that use buds as pollinators tends to produce copious nectar and have red petals. That means the flowers which are Pollinated to the buds, their petals are red in color. Now, another pollinating method is switching method. It is possible for a plant have varying pollination method, including both biotic and abiotic pollination. That's mean, in case of some flowers, biotic and abiotic both pollinations occurs. This type of pollination is known as switching method. The orchid that is Osioclats maculata uses both rain and butterflies as pollinating essence depending on its environmental conditions. Here rain is a abiotic pollinating essence and butterflies is a biotic pollinating essence. Now the types of pollinations, types or kinds of pollina pollinations. 
Depending on the source of pollen, pollination can be divided into three types. That is autogamy, getonogamy, and genogamy. What is autogamy? In this type, in this type, pollination is achieved within the same flowers. That means when pollination occurs in same flowers, is known as autogamy. Auto means own. Transfers of pollen grains from the anther to the stigma of the same flower. Autogamy is in such flowers require synchrony in pollen release and stigma receptively and the anthers and stigma should lie close to each other so that self pollination can occur. That's mean synchrony, autogamy in such flowers require synchrony. Synchrony means they can develop and move together. And in case of autogamy, the stigma and anther they lies closely so that they can occur self pollination. The, com the example of autogamy pollination is viola, oxalis, and camelina. And the another type of pollination is getanogamy. What is getanogamy? Transfers of pollen grains from the anther to the stigma of another flower of the same plant is known as getanogamy. That means in autogamy we see that pollination or pollen grains transfer same flower same flowers in same plants. But here in case of getanogamy we see that the pollen trans transfers from different flowers but the plant are same. Although gitanogamy is functionally cross pollination, pollinating essence, but it is similar to the autogamy since the pollen grains come from the same plants. That means in case of gitanogamy, there occurs cross pollination, but it is similar to the autogamy. Now another type of pollination, type of pollination is genogamy. Transfers of pollen grains from another and third to the stigma of the different plants is known as genogamy. That's mean when pollen grains transfers from another plants. In case of genogamy, their genera or species will be same, but the genera will be same, but the species will be different. So when the pollen grains transfers from different plant is known as genogamy.